Okay, now we're gonna talk about our next uh, episode in this spring cleaning or spring detox in the medical detoxification world. Um, there's, like I said in my previous video, there's lots of buzz around detoxification and things, and so, but there's a lot of things misconstrued and gimmicks, so we're gonna try to make this more medical. If you haven't seen my pre previous videos, you'll wanna see the previous, you wanna understand how toxins are affecting you, and you wanna go back and watch the videos I do with Tyler, um, the nutritionist, to talk about different ways to avoid retoxification and how to use food to detoxify you. In this video, we're gonna go over the timeline of detoxification. It might be a little more boring, but this is an, a key piece before you proceed to any of the other videos, so we're gonna make it brief because you don't need to know all the details. The first step in treating or, or detoxifying when we treat our patients is you gotta start with nutrition. If you're not eating good food, then you're, you, you are retoxifying yourself. So the first step is to clean up the nutrition, remove toxins from the food, and bring in nutrients. Your body needs nutrients to detoxify. After that, we have to start with gut restoration. So too many times people jump into, whoops, wrong one, jump into treating the toxic burden before they've restored the gut. The gut is both our portal into the nutrition. It's, a, it's absorbing the nutrients, absorbing the calories that actually power the detoxification cycles. If the gut is not absorbing well, then your detoxification is not gonna go well. In addition, the gut is where the liver dumps its toxic burden into the bile and, and, you, try, and you need to get rid of it in the toilet, obviously. But if your gut is broken, you end up recycling those toxins over and over and over again. There's more and more research coming out showing that Actually, the microbiome and the bacteria in our bowels do more detoxification than our own liver does. So we don't fully understand it all, but we know that if you, de if you restore someone's gut, their detox pr processes speed up even without supplementation. So you can't skip the gut restoration. I put some timelines here. You can see that I said basic nutrition changes take about a month. Then as you get into the gut restoration, we spend a lot of time on gut restoration before we even really progress to much detoxification. So we're gonna do that for about six months before we get into detox. And in that six month period of focusing on gut restoration, it actually gets uh, better and better. Your own detoxification pathways start getting ramped up. After that, we wanna focus on toxin avoidance. That takes another month. And then we're gonna test the toxic burden to see what actual toxins you have so that we know what we're treating. And then finally, we're gonna treat the toxic burden for another six months. So to go through it a little more detail, toxin avoidance takes about a month. So what is toxin avoidance? Toxin avoidance is stopping the retox, and I've got a separate video coming up on that, where instead of focusing on trying to get toxins out of your body, the first step is to stop toxins from coming into the body. The body's gonna be focused on what's already coming its way. So if you don't get those out of the way, then it's never gonna focus on what's already stored inside, okay? After that is when we test the toxic burden because there's no reason to test the toxic burden when you've got toxins coming in because we're just gonna see what you're already eating and what you're drinking and what you're breathing, those toxins that are already ex exposed. What we want to know after you've avoided all those toxins is what's remaining inside of your tissues, what's inside of your fat cells, what's inside of your brain cells, and what do we need to treat? Then that helps us isolate what we need to treat and how long it's gonna treat. In general, I treat my patients in rounds of six months of detoxification. There's not much reason to do toxin testing in between six months. So we treat for about six months before we retest. Um, this is an important topic of which toxins come out first because I, I see people talking online all the time about, oh, Roundup is, is terrible, glyphosate is terrible, so detoxify that first. You don't get a choice as to what comes out of your body first. Your liver, your enzymes, your body is deciding what toxins come out first. Your genetics are deciding which ones come out first. So your body is gonna get rid of the most, accept, the most toxic, the easiest to get rid of ones first. Alcohol is a great example. We are all exposed to Roundup and we have been exposed to Roundup, but if you drink alcohol, you don't stay drunk for years you detoxify that within hours, and you might be hung over for a day or so, but Roundup will stay in your system for years and years. So your body, even though Roundup might be worse for you, has less access to it, and it's harder to get rid of, so it's gonna linger longer. So when it comes to detoxification, we don't get to choose what the body gets rid of first, so we focus on removing all of the toxins and let the body decide what it wants to remove first. 
In order to do that, we have to facilitate all the detoxification processes. And I'm gonna go into detail, but the three main phases that I break down uh, detoxification into is you gotta mobilize the toxin, then you have to process the toxin, then you have to actually eliminate the toxin, which is get it out of your body. And uh, I've got this question here, what if your body wants, what if you want glyphosate out of your body first? And uh, wrote, good luck figuring that out. So last but not least is after you're done treating the toxic burden, you must retest the toxic burden. And so after about six months of treating, you can go back and retest. If you still feel symptoms or something, then there may not be much reason to retest. It might just cost more money. As far as um, detoxification retesting, there's multiple different tests and depending on which chemicals or which toxins were highest, those are the tests you wanna repeat. So I've got listed here, there's biological, mycotoxins, environmental chemicals, and then heavy metals. Um, so we, I will get into in the separate video the specific types of toxins. So if you're curious about this, then watch that video coming up. So next, before we get into types of toxins, we're going to get into stopping the retoxification, stopping the retox of your body in order to focus on detox. So if you want to know about how to stop the retox, check this out next.